Welcome to Deadcast. De- nope. Welcome to Dead Cell. Dead Cell. Welcome to Dead Cell number, what is this? 18? 16. It's, it's like 15. 15. Welcome to Dead Cell 15. Play the intro song. That was the intro song. That was it. I feel I feel very unprepared for today's podcast, but I'm sure this is going to be a good one. Today, we're talking about a couple of very important things. Remote ID officially dropped in the United States on the 16th of this month. What's today? The first. So like halfway through 15, half, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, Remote ID dropped. Nobody's gone to prison yet. I haven't seen any crazy fines or anything. I haven't really seen many Remote ID modules for sale. We're going to get into all of that. Another topic, I, I want to talk about Rampage. I don't know if everybody's sick about talking, shitting on Rotorite and shit, but they kind of went through a crew change. They went through a different, uh, what do they have now? Different corporate structure? Is that what it would be? They changed some shit around. I don't know if I hate Roto Riot because that would mean hating some people I don't even know. So we're going to get into all that today. How have you been, Grim? Do anything cool since the last podcast? I mean, what was the last one? Mike? Yeah, last Mike Duran. was Mike Duran of Gem Fan. Uh, that was fun. Thank you, Mike, for doing that. You done anything cool since then? I put a FPV camera on top of my car, my RC car today. And then I put I started printing this boat oh shit fpv boat yes but i had to order That's... some parts for it it's actually the exact same motor and esc or use the same size motor as the scx24 so i got another motor and then an esc to put in here and then i'd order like a rod and fucking something else but you print the, pro- uh, the even the propeller but it's a um it's gonna be a jet propulsion boat so like oh sick so those water is going to pr- basically there's going to yeah, be a turbine yeah, yeah. inside that, like a jet ski yeah basically so i'm going to fpv that too sick we i've done a fpv boat before it's pretty fun yeah i was going to buy a boat but i don't even know what it, i don't want to spend any money like that kind of money right now that one i got was 100 bucks and it it hauls ass it's got good reviews and shit too where'd you get it uh i think it's a wl toys so i got it from like aliexpress or some bull or i got on ebay on ebay okay. i can show i can go back through my purchase history and okay. show you the one i got but I was watching a video, uh, was it Expat RC, I think? He, he did a video on it, on a boat, and I was like, holy shit, those haul ass, I can go for 100 bucks, like, let's go. Fucking got one. The thing is, I'm trying not to buy RC toys, RC products, as much as I possibly can that don't come with their own radio. Because I don't want a bunch of fucking radios. Because I have that MT, that Radio Master one now, and that thing is can handle everything. Yeah. The so, what are you saying? Well, I mean, well, that's true, yeah. But what can you get a ELRS fucking boat? Well, I could just get I what I what I would hope is that what I would wish would happen with like RC plant wings. Like wings are basically you can buy like almost ready to fly, bind and fly, not even bind and fly, just like no receiver. You plug and plug and fly. What's it called? PNP, plug and play. Plug and play, yeah. So that comes with the radio, I think. Plug and play, right? No, no, it doesn't PNP? it comes with no receiver. So it has everything you need in it but a receiver and you put your own receiver in it. I wish that more cars and more um, stuff like that would come with that. But instead, they build these cars and they put a radio in it. They all come with a spectrum. Yeah, and it's all some bullshit and spectrum and thing. And, yeah. and like, all I'm going to do with that is just throw it in the trash. Basically. And sometimes like the SCX24, the big problem with that one is that um, the ESC is built into the esc is into the radio transmitter rtf ready to fly that's the yeah. other one that's yeah, and they're super. ready to ride I, ready to ride speaking is for, of, for cars yeah. i've heard remote id um I, you know all drones you have to come with one pre-made drones i've heard they change it to just ready to flies so um, any drone that comes with a radio needs remote id but you know if you just sell bind and fly like in your little drone store so yeah, it won't require remote id so you know the com- to come with it so you know the company the yeah, old fine. school FPV company, uh, they're Strix. Yeah. So they're owned by uh, ReadyMade RC, which is a, which is um, the retailer that sells like they don't sell. They sell. They're starting to sell more drone stuff now, but they do a lot of plane stuff. Um, but they're in Columbus, or they're like thirty minutes north of Columbus, and so you can do like in store pickup. And so when I first started getting an FPV, that's where I went to pick up stuff because yeah, I wanted to get stuff fast and I could just drive there. So that's where I buy a lot of my first drone parts. And, uh, but I've been, I've been going up there talking to that dude that owns that, that owns it. Cause he's always the ones that brings out the orders. 
And he was tell- he's he's been in this for a while, and he said he's had meetings with the FAA where you know he's gotten he said the deal with the FAA from for legal reasons because of X thing they're selling or whatever. And he told me, this is what he told me, is that when it comes to remote ID, well, and this was like months and months ago when they were still talking about it. He says, when it comes to those things, the FAA considers an aircraft to need remote ID is one that is completely ready to go, meaning (laughs) that it comes with a radio and an aircraft. Right, ready to fly. So if, yeah, so, so if it doesn't come with the, the radio, so like what Rotor Riot does, which this will be a good transition. So which what Rotor Riot does is they sell those bind and flies with no radio. So therefore it's not ready to fly. Right. Therefore they can get away with it. But on the other hand, DJI or Altel or whoever that make manufactures camera drones, those have to come with remote ID because they have everything ready to go. Right. But so, uh, you see, um, like none of the major drone companies have had implemented remote ID to the specifications of the FAA. I think DJI did, but I'll tell Sky uh, Sky Duo did as well. Sky Dio, whatever. Like two of the, three of the four or three of the five, whatever the major ones what about failed Hollystone? with the remote ID. <laughs> I don't know about Holly Stone, but I, I did see that they have one now. My new, <coughs> my new bit is to bring up Holly Stone as much as I possibly can. They are pretty garbage their drone that drone gimbal is made of two rubber bands that they sent me that thing was the biggest piece of shit so i think they got angry too because we just destroyed the drone instead of reviewing it but i mean whatever don't prey on people with fucking piece of shit products you know or pieces of shit so so bardwell did a video a couple of weeks ago about this um this pixhawk platform made by holly bro and i was mm-hmm. confused but holly bro is actually legit holly bro makes the pixhawk like flight controller mm-hmm. and they have this whole $600 dev kit where you can do like an Ardu pilot, you know, 10 inch, you know, dev drone, like mm-hmm. uh, autonomous. Yeah. And I'm like, I want one of those. Yeah. That's pretty sick. I'd, I'd play with that. Um, I've wanted to do long range autonomously. I think that sounds super fun. Like set a flight. I mean, half the fun of long range is doing all your shit, but I think it'd also be fun to, to run an autonomous flight, like set a path and see if you can do well, it. The cool thing about this is that, <laughs> I can I can enter with Mavlink. I haven't read fully into exactly all of this, but Mavlink, I can interface with a Raspberry Pi, which means I can re- interface with my 4G modem. Mm-hmm. So I could fly my autonomous long range drone via 4G. Via 4G, and I can get a video sick. link. It may be a lot of latency, but it's going to be flying right. itself for the most part. Right, right. But I can get a video feed via 4G. That's pretty sick. I, I'd be fun to play with for sure. So that's what I want to do. But it's just like six hundred dollars. I'm. I almost. I'm, I was going to email them today and be like, "Hey, I have this idea for a video I want to do," and I'll show them like the video I did for the car. That's like this has twelve thousand views right now. Like, you're not going to get a drone video. You guys aren't going to get these kind of views like with mm-hmm. anybody else. So hit me up. Let me have this. Thing. You never know. That's how I used to get free shit. I would just email tons of companies yeah. and just play the, play the fucking odds and see who gets back to me. Now I don't like doing reviews or anything, so I'm like, ugh. I just say no to basically everything unless it's HD zero or like a bind and fly that I want. Um, yeah. Oh, then the other thing I'm doing is I printed a uh, for my seven inch. I'm, I printed like a, a payload release, and it, the servo goes mm-hmm. in here, so I can release, and we're gonna do um, like a egg drop. Kind of like a William Osmond nice. egg drop, but from a yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's tight. So I thought about doing that exactly that like egg drop challenge from a drone, but I didn't want to build a release thing. That's when I so good that, job. That's why how I got into FPV was I was trying to build a drone to do this exact project that I have not done yet, and it's been like <laughs> over a year. So, so what do we talk about first? Remote ID or fucking eight hundred dollar rampage? Um, we kind of you get the pick. The, oh. Rampage. We barely. We skimmed. We skimmed remote ID. Let's let's do let's do rampage. And All right. I want to talk about before we say anything. I want to preface everything that I heard through my through just like the the grapevine. You know, uh, a friend of mine spoke with a person. I don't want to say names because I don't want to get into all that. But um, someone I know spoke with uh, their 
I think their new CEO or something. I don't know. But he told me that uh, Rota Riot has, here's a few things of what he said. So first of all, the reason that it costs so much um, is what he's telling me is that uh, liability insurance. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know, man. You're, you're telling me because cause, cause Spider told me that for there's an Airsoft event at that exact place and it's like mm -hmm. a fraction of the price you know like mm -hmm. oh yeah of course and also you what what international open does is they require everybody to have ama insurance of their own yeah <clears throat> so everybody carries their own insurance instead of the, the organization paying for it so there's that okay but then okay but it gets it gets more than that so um i was like i don't know if this that that's whatever but he said he said that she um their new CEO, I forget what her name is, but um, that they they were Bubby, Bubby's mom. Yeah, yeah, super mm -hmm. nice. Like, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't always know, pleasant interactions with her. Apparently, um, she said that they didn't make they don't they didn't make a lot of money off the event. Like, she's like, we didn't make a lot of money on, on the event. Um, she didn't. Well, the the company and someone and I don't know what the number who told me this, uh or spider or somebody was taught we were talking about it in like a voice chat the other night and someone's i don't even know where this came from so this is all baseless information this mm -hmm. number so it's like oh they made one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, and i'm like okay well that's a lot of money to like me as an individual but to as mm -hmm. a, but as a person throwing on an event that's not actually a lot of money in the that's income point. or profit profit yeah it's it's a lot of money to a person uh but to to somebody throwing uh, like if you were to throw a music festival, like a massive music festival, and you were only to pull out like six figures, like low six figures, you would never have that music festival again. Yeah, I mean, if that, I mean that was going to one person, yeah, but you got if you got to split that up between employees and shit, nah. Well, no, that's that's that is the company's profit, like what the what the, like the company made after all the expenses. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, so, gotcha. So, I mean, but so the <clears throat> right, so that's business shit. Mm -hmm. The reality, but but I'm not done. Is, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, <laughs> so so here's here's the other thing is last year it was like X amount. I don't remember how much, and it went up this year. And another thing that my friend had told me when he spoke with her, because he I don't know why he talked to her, but I guess he like he bought the platinum pass or something, and I don't know if he was frustrated with the cost, but he reached out to them and they told him that. Uh, so it's in that like room, you know, that reactor room or whatever that's in the whatever. Someone mm -hmm. like climbed in some place where they really weren't supposed to. And like it could have been very dangerous and somebody could have died if they had, you know, you know, if this thing happened, they could have fallen and died or whatever. And that mm -hmm. video popped up like they record. It was on video or whatever, like everything, you know. And the company that owns that facility, I forget what it's called, DSI, MSI, I don't know what it is, but they saw the video and went to Rota Riot and said, hey, like, this is a problem. So therefore, like, it's going to cost more now. <laughs> it's going to cost more money because, because of, that? of that liability of like some people climbing in there and doing shit like that. So there's a liability cost to the company that owns that place, DSI or whatever that company's called that owns that like military training academy or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah for so sure. So they raise the cost because of that. That's insane though. I mean, <clears throat> $800 to camp and fly your drone for a couple of days. I that think the just... camping charge, I think the camping charge is, is ludicrous personally. I don't know why. It's insane. It's insane. I, I mean, look at similar events that have insurance. They charge like $100 max. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I've been to a lot of events. It's like a hundred bucks. They get insurance and everything. It's not eight hundred fucking dollars like that. Look, look at flight test. I'm sure flight test carries full full insurance, and that's um, how much was that? I think 175 for the whole weekend, mm -hmm. something like that. It just either they're really fucking bad at business or they're overcharging people camping. You know what I mean? And, and when I say they, I'm talking about company wide. Like it was Drew and it was Chad Capper. Now they're out, right? Mm -hmm. So now there's just. What Jeff Thompson, the owner of Red Cat, and then the C is is she the CEO? Bubby's mom, I forget her name. Nice woman, nice lady. Um, <clears throat> but I was, you know, I'm, I'm like fuck Rota Riot and fuck all that shit. But that's corporate structure. Like I like Bubby, I like Let's Fly RC, I like Bubby's mom. Like I like all the kids that appear on Rota Riot now. They're all sweethearts and shit. I'm just like, 
that eight hundred dollars to camp on the fucking ground, man. How can you how can you support that? How can you do that to your fellow pilots? You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. if you're advertising that shit for them, how can you do that to other fucking pilots? We're in a pretty fucked up like financial state in America right now. Most people are paying way too much for rent and not making enough money. And they're gonna charge people. That's somebody's rent. Like somebody's rent is eight hundred dollars and they're gonna pay that for a fucking weekend to sleep on the ground. That just seems insane to me. Like if that's how much you have to charge, you shouldn't be doing that event. In my opinion, but that's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, You're not good at running events if that's your fee. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, fuck out of here. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, exactly. That, that's also the thing is I don't understand the uh, cost. Uh, like, do they uh, like for the camping thing? I don't understand why that has to cost anything. Um, I'm sure they, they, there's a reason, um, you know, maybe it's to help like offset some other things. I don't know. It's, it's insane. It, glamping, they call it glamping to try to make it better. I don't know. I don't think I, like, okay. So if you, if you want to go hang out with people and fly drones and shit, I totally get it. I just think sneak in, man. It's probably really easy to sneak in. I don't think you should be paying 800 fucking dollars. Like maybe if your homie's going, just hide in the back of his car or some bullshit. I don't know what you got to do, but that's a lot of fucking money to stand in the sun and fly drones with your friends that you can do for free. Like there's other meetups that are cheaper. I do meetups a few times a year that are completely free in different cities and shit. Like if you got the money, you know, I, I'm not, I would never tell anybody how to spend their, yeah, I would, but I would never hate on you for how you spend your money. If you got the money and you want to go, go have fun. I'm sure it'll be a great time, you know, hanging out with FPV nerds. Meetups are always awesome, but that's just a lot of fucking money. <laughs> it's a lot of money to spend on that to camp out and fucking fly drones. Um, yeah. If I had uh, if I had the ability, I would. I mean, Fly High is doing a bunch of uh, um, he's doing a thing. I just saw pop up Castle Crash. No, there's another thing he has going. He's oh, running sick. this like bando or something. I just saw it on Instagram. I don't know exactly what it Fuck is. Yeah, but See, there's a lot of events. But yeah, and a, a lot of this like nothing is as expensive as Rampage. Yeah, it's insanely overpriced. I think what I think you know what I think? you know what I want to know. Do we still have voicemail? Yeah, here's what I think. Actually, we I think we might have voicemail. I'll have to double check. Okay. Um. If we have voicemail, I'll write a comment. In this. I want to know what you think. If we have voicemail, there'll be a number. And I want to call in. Let me know what you think about the price. I, only if you're pro. If you're pro, I want you to argue why it's worth it. Because I would like to know seriously. I mean, don't argue, but like, let me know why you think it's worth it. If you think it's worth it. All right. Anyway, uh, here's what I think. Uh, I think as an FPV, as an organization who's sort of been in, in the, the hobby in this like community since the beginning, and even though they're owned by like a corporate whatever entity or whatever at this point, a data still, collection company, it's they, a data collection company. Don't forget. Well, yeah, they still have either way. The rotor Riot still has a bit of autonomy to operate mm-hmm. and make decisions to some extent. They're not just like it's, I would, I would doubt that red cat does too much like, you know, meddling and sorts of things like this but mm-hmm. what i would say at this point if the cost is expensive and it's a result of the venue find a new venue yeah it's time yeah, definitely you know definitely. like it's not like the venue is cool but it's not cool enough to offset the cost and you would have yeah. so many more people if you could find another place like if fly high can find a sick ass fucking bando to rent out Rotor it could probably find something even better for cheaper. There's there's so many places you could run out that you can camp that have structures on them and shit. Yeah. I mean that's a super big one. They got the deal. Yeah, I heard if we're gonna talk about rumors, I heard somebody try to rent it out because they were like a couple years ago, they're like, This is too much. We want to rent out and do our own event. And they got in touch with the people and they're like, We can't. We have a contract with Rotor Riot not to host any other FTV drone events here. You can do like paintball, airsoft fucking whatever, but no other I don't know how true that is. Somebody fairly trustworthy told me that. And I'm like, damn, that's kind of fucked up if so. So not only are they, you know, charging a bunch of cock blocking any other any other person in the community that wants to use that space. If if true, I think that's pretty fucked up in itself. 
And if we talk, I mean, someone will correct us if it's wrong. Yeah, let, let, me, know. The let me know if, if you can rent it out. And if, if you can rent it out for less than $500 or $800 a ticket, somebody should do that. What I call think, it like something different. Yeah, I mean, also, I just think like a new a new venue is probably in order. If this, if it's a matter of, if the cost of the venue is in a liability insurance and all that, then I would just find a new venue and... Mm-hmm. You know, I know it's like, oh, but this is the venue we've always done. It's like, all right, who cares? We've already done it so many times. People, you know, I people went the have, first year. Yeah. I, I went the first year and since it's like a police a training yeah. thing, there was cops fucking everywhere. All there's cops uh, plain clothes in uniform all over the fucking place. And I'm like, I'm trying to smoke weed and hang out. So I was uncomfortable the whole time. It's like and it's South Carolina. It's like these cops are even though we're on the premises, like they want to fuck with me, they're gonna fuck with me. So I had to hide and smoke weed everywhere I went, which is very uncomfortable. Well, there were no cops last year when I went. There was, there was no I didn't even see like anybody really who worked for that organization, maybe like a couple people. Um, mainly Rotoride at this point, I think has like, how much was it when you went? How much you pay? I don't know, like 350 bucks. So I'll go. I would like to go. I want to go, but I don't want to spend the money on it. Yeah, it went from 300 to 800. That's nuts. No, it's 800. If you want to camp, what would you pay? Not camp. I didn't camp. I stayed in a, uh, a shitty motel, which it costs. Wait, 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 wait. It's 350 just to get on the grounds per day or for the weekend. I'm going to tell you right now how much it is right now. That's fucking insane, bro. I mean, okay, so I could a hundred bucks a day. If it's a hundred bucks a day, I can, I can, I can get that. That I, that's not horrible, but to pay an extra five hundred dollars to camp, like go get yourself a fucking hotel room with a hot tub if you're paying five hundred extra dollars for a pilot for a pass. Weekend. It's three hundred and fifty dollars for two days. For two days, okay, so like one hundred and fifty a day. That's still a lot of money, but I can see that. That that I can totally see. Uh, Maybe the camping is making up for that. One seventy. That's kind of a lot. And still. then, and then the pot. Then to 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 camp, it's eight fifty for two. So days. an extra five hundred. Oh, but it's four nights. Camp. Four nights of camping. <laughs> it's that's still too much. Two. What is that? Two hundred, hundred fifty a day. Three six. I don't know, man. I don't know math, but I'll do it. That's right now. I'm doing the math. So it's five hundred. dollars hundred a day to get on the grounds is crazy. Five hundred dollars. Five. Wait, hold on. No, it's not. Eight, 350. <laughs> Wait, fucking math. Wait, 850 minus 350 is 500. So that's $500 for four day, four nights of camping. Think about 125 that. Bucks, 125 bucks a day to camp. Think about you, that. You could go to a hotel fucking, room. How much are those like? Yeah, how much? Well, I guess it is the same cost. It's like, well, the, the motel is like the only one there is fucking... Oh, small town. There's only yeah, one. Yeah, dude. You like? I'm sure they jack the prices up too for that weekend because they know people are coming in. I don't think they do because the hotel don't. I don't think they know shit. I don't think they every know. hotel I've ever seen raises the price when there's like conventions and events and stuff in town. That's pretty damn common. They did it at the at the We Bleed thing. It went from being like 125 bucks to like 300 a room during the uh, during the race. Um, dude, I sometimes I forget that we're doing a podcast. Um. So, <laughs> all right yeah. so so there's every time i know so hold on there's i'm looking up that you know those like koa campsites yeah i'm looking up how much that is but it's like, those are expensive koa but you know the trick to koa is huh you roll in at like 3 a.m and you leave at like 7 a.m and before the rangers get a chance to record your plate or anything and you pop on out Fuck KOA. You should pay for your, like your local state campgrounds. KOA's fucking no, I know. The Walmart I'm just trying to, camping. I'm, so I would never. No, I'm just telling the people. I'm telling yeah. the people out there. Yeah, I would. feel free to scam KOA, but you know, little campsites definitely pay for that. That's the state ran shit. They barely get any funding. Um, KOA is just a Walmart. You can take a shit at. Like the state. I guess you shit at Walmart. Like the camp in like a federal, like a like a national park is like nothing. It's like five bucks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you should respect those for sure. Fuck a KOA. I think the the only thing that the U.S. government has ever done well is the national parks. I mean, they're still fairly pristine. Every one that I've gone to, even around here, we have like a few national, state, um, wildlife, or I guess mm-hmm. it'd be federal. It's national, right? Uh, federal wildlife shits by my house. We got the world's North America's oldest botanical garden uh, is a couple miles from me and shit. Like, it's pretty nice. We got some pretty nice parks around. And Philly's filled with trash, but they do a good job keeping the the parks and, and shit nice. Yeah, parks are well, the, the, the forests. I feel like that like 
uh yeah it's it's wild how we are able to keep the parks and stuff nice but then anyway so that would be fun we should make some stickers for rampage and give them out to people make some dead cell stickers and be like put put these everywhere at rampage and send us a picture and win a prize that's a good idea i'm actually going to i'm actually going to oh speaking of shirts i'm going to make a dead cell shirt sick and then i'll I'll rock one huh I'd rock one. I want one. I'll print one. I'll get them. And then I got this. Uh, I got control back shirt. I got this. I got control back shirt. <laughs> if you where, want, where one, can you pick that up at? Uh, you can go to grimripper dot online. Yeah, clever URL. I mean, there was dot com was not available, so that's. I, I bought it. I bought a dot a dot fun. A <laughs> dot fun. Uh, a few months ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some other bullshit. I'm slowly going to. Here's my plan, and I don't know if it's going to happen. I reached out to. Here's a little side note. Okay, so a little little plug here. Um, All right, plug it up. I reached out to uh, BBLFPV Chase, mm-hmm. Young Chase, because he was they were he was the one I was told to reach out to about Racewire because I wanted to sell I want to buy a bunch of Racewire and sell it wholesale. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, can you get some printed with like my you know YouTube name like Grim Ripper on like one side, and then have BBL on the other side. Um. I think that would be cool. He didn't respond to that part though, but he said he's going to do some numbers. <laughs> so I might be selling yeah. those because I, I, nice. I don't think there's really any point for me to just sell BBL Racewire. But if it, had, if it was BBL partnership, I would do that. Yeah. Uh, and then BBL. maybe we could get some dead cell Racewire. I don't use Racewire, but. No, you don't, but I don't either. No. Why would we make it? Let's not make it then. Let's make something cool <laughs> that we use. Well, people Let's use make it, like hats. But, but people use Racewire. Why? I don't. I think. Yeah, it's dumb. I don't. Why? Why are you gonna chop your? That's like nine more points. Was it three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, three hundred eight, nine, like thirty-four more points of failure you're adding to your drone? I don't. I don't see the point of doing that shit. Um, why are you gonna fucking? I mean, there's some, so many other ways to protect your your motor wires if you're worried about that. It's true. I mean, nothing wrong if you use it. I'm a hater though. I don't use it. I think it's fucking dumb to cut up a brand new motor like that and add that many more points of failure i think like just solder to your esc put some fucking tape on it and go rip i used it for a while and then i was i got tired of it well what was your reasoning maybe i'm missing something my reasoning i think the, mm-hmm. the thing is is that i had been repairing drones so much that my cables on my on my uh motors were so fucked or like they would change length so much because i would have to mm-hmm. change you know maybe i went from a 30 to 30 and i only had a 20 by 20 and I was like, okay, well, this wire is not, or like vice versa, wire is not. So you long just use enough. it as an, like, an extendo. Yeah, and if I'm gonna do one, I'm just like, I might as well do them all. Yeah, all right. I mean, that that's the valid reason. So that's I just add, I just yeah, solder more wire. Now, mine, now but. what I do is I just saw, I just put the wire together and solder the wire, and then yeah, heat shrink it, do. and then mm-hmm. I electrical tape it. But I've never since I've been like flying, like, you know, proficiently, I don't think I've ever struck a wire with my proper anything i definitely have but i usually put tape over it i do too i i've never had an issue uh you can use a if people don't know you can use a broken prop save a broken prop snip it off lay that over there last week some, some zip ties or tape on it yeah that definitely one of the old school tricks um we wrapped up the road to riot thing yeah, yeah. okay so yeah I mean, go if you want if you got the money and it sounds like fun to you definitely go i just think it's an insane price to pay for what it is um for the camping pass anyway there's there's a bunch of other events i do them for free all over the fucking country well usually just east coast oh, you do? flying but well I, yeah you've been a couple of the meetups shit we came to the philly one i know I'm, I'm kidding because there hasn't been one in oh. like it's been winter where the fuck am i going to do one in the winter on the east coast Hey, the FPV park I haven't worked on because it's been it's still like 20 degrees at night at the park. So there's an update for people wondering why I haven't made another park video. It's still in like the high 20s at night and I don't want to fucking deal with that. So uh, probably late April when it warms up, I'll be going out there making another video. People, as far as the meetups, I don't know. I'll do one soon. People want to know about the park because, you know, they're like, well, what's up with the park? And I'm like, well, it's winter. I know not 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 only because I talked to you, but because it's just obvious that you live on the east coast well you're it's Midwest, cold as it fuck snows yeah yeah and i think there's a lot of people who fly drones in the west like in california yeah there there's a lot of people i i assume most of the comments asking me why i haven't worked on it are from california or somewhere where it doesn't snow and get super cold All- and it's in the mountains too so it stays colder like you know it, it's been in the 50s here but it's still been in the 30s there because it's up in the fucking mountains also that land requires a lot of effort 
I'm gonna come yeah, out there. I mean, with you it's, next, it's gonna be slow going. But. I'm gonna go out there with you one time. Um, yeah, I mean, several times, hopefully. Yeah, it's not too far. It's closer to you than it is. Wait, you no, know, how how far is it for you? Like four hours? Yeah. Is there is there is there a, uh have you figured out like the uh firearm situation for that property? I mean, the dude that homie that lives in the front by that house, he um aims that way to <clears throat> to to sight his guns for hunting season and shit. Okay. So but, like people should be shooting guns there. Cool. He hunts back there. Cuz uh I have this what I want to do. I mean, I don't know if this is the place to do it, but I do want to. I have a bunch of dead lipos that I want to just fucking light up with. Uh, <laughs> just shoot and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm I'm thinking the park. Like from last time we went out there and shit, it was more conducive to micros. So I think we might push for that and not really try to make no crazy like five inch obstacles <clears throat> and really just set it up for like three and a half stuff. I mean, we already have a little tiny loop thing we're setting up, but the the rest of the property, the other eight acres make it targeted maybe more towards um look at your fucking face you're like what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> i think it, 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 it's a better use of it's fuck off. it's such a better use of space and you can rip a five inch if you want but i'm not cutting down like good healthy trees to make room or anything like that we're cutting down all the dead ones and shit mm. um, i think it'd be super fucking fun for my you can still rip a five inch it's still gonna be the same obstacles but i'm saying i think it'd be funner uh, for smaller all stuff. All I'm saying is, all, I don't. I mean, I don't give a shit. All I know is that like people are gonna be pissed. What if I make more obstacles that are smaller? Well, fucking get better at flying then, and you can dive with a five inch. Um. Well, you yeah, know, I'm just saying, like, if it's, I guess, if you just make, I guess, how it's not gonna be a bunch of small gaps and shit or anything. Like, they're gonna be decent sized gaps. It's still gonna be a bunch of that shit. I'm just saying, you know, <clears throat> I don't want to cut it down into healthy trees. So there's gonna be a lot of fucking trees around. It might be easier to fly smaller quads, mm -hmm. but we'll see. You know what I mean? We've worked on it twice, so we'll see. Things can definitely change. It's a hard. I thought it was a good idea. I don't. I don't like, I don't like your feedback on this. I thought. I thought it'd be cool to have a little micro. Well, park. I. Th I mean, I think if you had a section that's a micro park, but I think that there there needs to be. Uh, you need to you need to cut out at least a clearing, of some sort to have a five inch. So there is. There's basically. When we went out there, we cleared off the first and second cap sites, the fire pit. We laid out a spot in the middle of that. And then after that, there's going to be another campsite. So that middle part could be for five inch. You know, we can clear some more trees out and put a big dive gap and some other shit right there. Some stuff down the trees like it could work. It's it's maybe uh, an acre in size or whatever, which, you know, probably be good for a uh, for five inch. Also, also, I think that's like the, the clearest, clearest spot is, is that spot there. And also what I think you need to do, you know, hmm. is have a space that you can do set up a have racing we could we could set up some some gates for racing i think that would be uh good for i think that there's probably a lot of racing people who are you know want to do their like loop-de-loops through the through the holes you know that mm -hmm. yeah we could set up a section that's like <clears throat> more, more race laid out than freestyle yeah just for really, just, we just gotta start building obstacles. That's the yeah. thing we can put them wherever. I wonder shit that's gonna last. You know, speaking of the winter, things that will last through snow and rain and wind and all that shit. Yeah, I wonder if there's like, if there's a way to just get old ass shit, like like old um, broken down cars and stuff. You know, just yeah. I don't really. I mean, maybe if there was like a van or something. Not even. But that. I think like. A trailer would be cool because yeah, you knock the windows out of the trailer. Or even like a shipping container. Cut a hole in it. Like a stack of oh, shipping yeah. containers. Well, there, there's like $7,000 left in the uh, FPV fund. So that's definitely for obstacles and things like that. And the property taxes I paid out of pocket, it was like 200 bucks. That ain't shit. So I got that every year. Um, Like I haven't I've spent maybe $300 after, after all was said and done. I bought a saw. I bought some lumber. And... uh like a shovel and shit. And that was really it. My, so most of the, the money after we got the land is still just chilling there. What I'm mostly surprised about is how fast you raised that money. I I felt like it took a long time, but I guess it was only what, like six months maybe. Bro, you posted that. You pro you post like uh, it was October. You posted about it like right before I made a video, my first YouTube video, basically. And then the money was pretty much raised by what when did you buy that property in the summer no it was in the summer 
No, because I, we I thought we started in October. I thought I thought it started in October. Okay. Yeah, because I was going to start it like on my birthday or whatever. October we started 20, in October. The GoFundMe of 2022. It, was that 2022? Yeah. Of October. Yeah, that would make sense then. Yep. And then, wait, no, because yep. when's the last time I went out there? You went out there. No, it had to be 2023. No, no, because no, that wasn't this year. That's true. That's true. It's 2024 now. Last year is 2023, and it was not October 2023. Because that was only like six months, four or five months ago. Let me see if I can uh, see when this started. I uh, definitely did not know you then. So Okay, so it was nine months ago. Nine months ago is when, uh, when it ended. When the GoFundMe ended? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, which... Is which you only started a few months before that. Let me see. If it'll show. Remember, the older you get, the faster time feels. Yeah, right. So it looks like looking at the <laughs> donations is about a year ago is when I started it. Yeah. So between a year and what was the other thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A year ago was the uh, the first donation. And then nine months, nine, 10, 11, 12. So it was like three or four months it took to get the money. All right. It felt like forever, but that was, that was, I, and see, here's the thing was when we were only at like $12,000, uh, they sent me a thing. They're like, Hey, you either have to input your bank account oh, details right. and, and go all the way with this or cancel the GoFundMe right now. And I was like, yo, we only made 12 fucking grand. Like that's not enough for shit. We're shooting for $70,000 to buy like what we're talking about. So I asked the community, I made posts, live, everything. And everybody was like, just go, just keep going. Like, fuck it, man. Do it. So we made, uh, was it 30 something thousand? And then I was like, okay, this is what we got. We're not getting what we set out to get because we need 70, 80 for that. We have like yeah, 38,000. And I spent a few months looking for shit and there was just nothing at all until I found the land that we found and uh, picked that one up. So definitely, you know, it's not going to be what we set out to do, but it's definitely going to be something fucking cool. It's probably going to be seventy percent of, well, yeah, we made how much? Seventy percent of the money, seventy percent of the fucking goal. Either way, it's going to be cool as shit, and I'm not going to be the only one working on it. Like a bunch of people, you know, people that want to make it fucking cool are going to go out there and make it fucking cool. Yeah, I think I'm just scared of the bears. The bears. Oh, there's yeah. bears, black bears out there. I haven't seen them yet, but they're out there. They're not going to come around when there's drones whipping around and fire. Like we run a big old bonfire fly drones around i was worried about the drones being uh too noisy too but so far you go out and stand on the fucking road and shit rip around can't really hear it it's like the trees and the little rocks in the valley shit block it well uh sounds like a good place to also maybe i don't know there's like out of woods but is there anywhere you could like long range from oh definitely in the town yeah. not the land because it's at the bottom of yeah. a hill but in town also, there's a beautiful river out there yeah. there's a town like three miles away the pizza place that's good and like it, it's really mellow vibe. I've been to some rural places that have kind of a hostile vibe. Everybody's super fucking cool that we run into out there. Like at first, like the people that, you know, are in that little neighborhood, are like, what's up? We're like, oh, we bought the land. And they're fucking, they're awesome. Like, well, I want some beer. You want some fucking reefer and shit. Like, totally, totally cool people. My kind of rural folk for sure. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. And I tell them, you know, like some people hit me up. They want to go out there. And I was like, yeah. Go ahead, go out there. I love the dude, no Yosem, because he kind of keeps an eye on it. It's like some people are going to go back there for the weekend, just so you know, heads up. Bro. Shit was all good. So, um, obviously, if you go out to that PV park, make sure you have your um, remote ID modules. We'll be yeah, check, it's private, be checking them private property. That's private property. We don't play that shit. Well, sovereign nation out there. That's that's yep. bot land. That's that's uh, out there where it was a bot space. sovereign citizen. Bot <laughs> space. We make our own rules. Yeah, it's a canopy. You know, there's trees everywhere. Like liter literally, <clears throat> there's so much tree canopy, like tall ass trees yeah. that it's covered. Like you would not need a remote ID because it is covered. Plus, if a plane was flying over the property, like that'd be the big problem, not a, a drone. Yeah, I don't think a plane can make it through the trees. Like I would like to see the FAA say that we're flying in open airspace when there's a huge tree canopy. If you punched up, you would fucking smack it. That is cool too. Yeah, I, I think it'll make everything pretty fucking handy. I'm excited to work on it. I I've stressed out on it a whole lot too because I'm like, there's a lot of people, you know, relying on this shit. I had like 600 people donating. I've talked about it forever. It was like the big project I wanted to do. 
So it's incredibly nerve wracking and stressful. But like every time I've gone out there, I've just been like, fuck, yeah, this is all all that stress goes away. I'm like, it's beautiful. There's a creek. The camping is pretty. The air is easier to breathe. Like it, it's just so peaceful out there. Oh, uh, nice. Um, I have something unrelated. I just thought of that. I wanted to ask. Did you see that um, Phantom has made a few videos? Talk about the strongest frame yeah and you put your frame mm -hmm. in it yeah, yeah yeah he hasn't done he hasn't done anything with flying them yet but i'm really curious because mm -hmm. he did it yeah actually i saw it good he did a second video where he added a bunch of new frames recently so mm -hmm. he's got a bunch of frames in that i tuned in to his live premiere randomly i was just scrolling to youtube and i was like oh sick phantom live premiere and it was right before he did the demi bot like i tuned in i was like oh sick you're doing frames i wonder if you're gonna do mine and then Time for the demi bot and say, like, oh shit, hell yeah. Like I, I flew with Phantom. I, I know Phantom. Like I don't think he would uh hide anything. He's a super honest guy, you yeah, know, yeah. I mean? just because I know him. But I'm like, fuck yeah, I know I know how he flies. He's a fucking ripper. So I know he'd appreciate the demi bot. I, I had a feeling because I'm proud of the frame, you know, I have a lot of mm. confidence in it. So I was like, I bet he's gonna like that shit. And he did too. He did. Did he have a video where he flew it? Not yet. Just okay weighing it and checking out the carbon yeah. and all the fucking the way it's assembled and everything like yeah. that dude knows his quads no he does yeah i wish he would have like um i know he wants to like do it like a whole thing i just want to see what how him fly that's all that's the only yeah, frame i want to see shits. that's the only frame i want him to, to see him fly honestly because i mean i've been flying mine for years i've broken like two arms and maybe three of the rear plates in all this fucking time like flying weekly with them you know i'm gonna say right now i think the only frames there's only a few frames that I think are really worth purchasing. And I think uh, probably like the Apex, the Demibot, and then probably like Vanover's frame. Um, Is that strong? No, no offense to Vanover, but when I think of like... No, no, not strong. Frame, he usually prior towards his... Life. Okay, I, was say, I think he prior But for, but for like a frame, a, a good frame to buy, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's also... quality. And then obviously anything Umagon, like the Cricket frame too, but... Yeah, uh, I haven't seen that one, but everything else I feel like is just, I don't know. There's so many just like Lumineer frame, like Gep RC frame. There's a lot of remakes. There's a lot of yeah. old frames that made HD and shit yeah. that fit like DJI, but there, there's not that many. We used to, I mean, I made a whole video about this, but we used to have a lot of original frames all the time that like some good, some bad, but X hover was making a lot of them. They don't really make them anymore. Our Matt Armitin was making them. They don't really do that anymore. Like new stuff. Um, there's a few companies that just stopped making frames. Cause I guess the owners were done with it or whatever. I mean, to be honest, though, I've really only flown consistently like the Apex and the Demibot. Apex has been around forever. I have an like, Apex. I, I, my Apex is a seven. My seven inches is an Apex. I had I had flew an Apex for a while, but the way that it broke and the way that the frame is like assembled is weird. Uh, but it's it breaks the same. It's it breaks the same way as uh, the Demibot though, like in that where the bolts go. But that's normal. Um, yeah yeah you put enough stress on holes it'll happen it just hey, it depends on how frequently or how easily it happens you know yeah. I mean? shit is gonna break but you should get a lot of slams out of it before it does until you stop crashing so much yeah that happens too like mm -hmm. you know somebody's first year they're probably gonna burn through shit even well made yep. frames but your your fifth year pilot is definitely gonna have their frames last a lot longer mm -hmm. i mean i've had the same frame for months now but I don't fly. Every <laughs> that day. shouldn't be impressive, but that's impressive. <laughs> but I don't fly every day. <laughs> um, but I do crash I, when I fly sometimes, but it's not that bad. So I went out and tried to freestyle. I made a video about it. It comes out like Saturday um, or whenever. When is this air? Oh, yeah, it'll come out this this Saturday. If you're listening to this when it drops. Um, I flew freestyle and I was very rusty and shit. And I slammed directly into a picnic bench and didn't break my GoPro or or my quad, which is nice. Some props. But like, it's been a minute. I know Cricket just made his one year thing, but I went to my channel and it's been seven months since my last like consistent FPV five inch video or whatever. For seven months, I've only been fucking with micros and doing like essay videos and bullshit. So I definitely, definitely felt rusty after all that. But I, I've always sucked at power loops. I was definitely struggling with them. Juicy flicks were really ugly. I only did a couple decent ones. Um, but I just like, it's not as fun anymore. I have a lot more fun with micros than five inch. But, you know, I say that, but you take me to like a sick bando or a sick office park mm -hmm. with a lot of dive gaps, then I'm going to have a ton of fucking fun. Yeah, I'm just so burnt out on all my spots here. I'm like, 
what do i do i'm just gonna wall ride and juicy flick all day fuck that yeah i feel i i don't have a lot of i we didn't have a lot of spots to begin with um so it's it's and and plus they're tearing down the fucking stadium i think so we won't, i won't even have like a bando i'll just be flying in whatever you know fucking parking lots probably um so. did they say about the the Bannon stadium in atlanta no it's in that new movie civil war that's coming out pretty soon right oh the one you tagged and it was in the background yeah yeah by, by fucking me and maddie blunts our tags are in a scene of that movie in the fucking um in was, it like a throw, was it like a throwy or what yeah big ass fucking throw it's so big the shot was from like the other side of the stadium on the bleachers like way the fuck back there mm -hmm. i saw it because i did green he did pink and i knew the exact spot so i saw the screenshot or the, the trailer and i paused it and i was like those are our fucking bags, dude. They took a screenshot, sent it to him to confirm. They definitely are. And the funny thing is somebody had gone over them. We went there and went back months and months, maybe even a year later. Somebody had gone over it. And I was like, okay, whatever. I was kind of toy anyway. So they filmed that movie in between those two mm -hmm. times. And they, they actually got our tags, which is sick. I'm curious to see if they do a more close-up shot or whatever. That would be That's sick. exciting. I've never had my tag in a movie. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> and it's like a crazy controversial one that I'm sure a ton of people are going to see. So. Um. Yeah, that's sick. I um. Anyway, what was I? I was like, I, I had. A, I was thinking about something. Oh, you're the taking away your your. Spot. Oh yeah, they're taking the bando away, but um, and I don't know like where to fly, but when I will, but what I know, Guess like you traveling. said in a video that recently about how um, there's like a lot of new people coming in FPV. Mm -hmm. I feel like, and I think that's true as well uh you know i think for better or for worse dgi has like a lot to do with that um mm -hmm. so much you know so fucking much to do with it and so i'm trying to figure out you know like so this is sort of the battle is that with like creating videos is that you have you have you have this like idea you have these uh this audience of people that you know will watch a certain thing right but it's only so big right and if you try to do something else that audience may not watch it therefore youtube won't won't like recommend it wider and that's sort of the problem but i want youtube to recommend my videos wider because i want people to find out about fpv because i mean back in the day people found i mean people still find out about fpv through youtube and stuff i'm sure right or yeah, i tell everybody finds it I, i'd say how'd you find fpv 90 percent of people would say youtube yeah so like but now the problem i think is that there's very few good content creators in the hobby doing it to spread it like i'd say unique i'd say i'd say unique over unique good good yeah okay okay headphones. i mean they're all good they're they're unique i guess is the, is, yeah, is the thing is back on to um, properly podcast hey julian i'm working because i mean back in the day you had Actually, uh you know i was talking to somebody about this i think it was spider on our my live stream or whatever um you remember that video that steel made like seven years ago where he's he's at like a work event and then he freestyles in between those buildings and it's at night and he's like chasing cars. There's like a oh yeah 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 in Atlanta I remember that. So <laughs> that that video has like a million some views on it, right? And it's but that's because it was when drones were first you know getting into like the the um the public space you know and a lot of probably dudes were like drones are cool drones yeah you know what I mean. Now people don't really think drones are like, drones are just drones. Like everyone's used to it, you know? So it's kind of lost that allure. So people like him were able to sort of- Fucking everywhere now. Yeah, so people- Even FPV drones. But this, yeah, everybody has like a bad as in bullshit. I think people are still kind of ignorant to FPV or general public, yeah. you know? So, yeah, so like that's sort of where, where, what I've been trying to figure out is what can I do to, that's why I try to really title my t videos not so like niched to very specific FPV things. Uh, like you have, you know, if it's, if someone makes a video that's like HD zero is the best FPV video system. That's really only gonna make sense to a very small fraction of 
people. Well, <laughs> maybe it's just my shit. <laughs> maybe just my my shit. But those videos for me do better than if I have a general one. Like Jail Blaster didn't do that great. Fucking my camera drone didn't do that great. Like my my builds don't do well. But if I do specific shit, like the history of F, like my essay videos do really yeah. But that goes good. back. But that goes back to my first point as saying that you have this audience that w that will click things that they understand. So you have an audience that is FPV primarily, and they're gonna click right. stuff that they get as FPV primary, primary stuff. So therefore it's gonna spread it to other FPV people, but then it's gonna stop. True, true. Right, so right. they do better, but there's like, there's a threshold in which you can expand that content because when it's super niche to like, HD zero is the cool video system of 2024 or whatever, uh yeah a lot of fpv people are gonna be like oh i want to hear about hg zero a lot because of hg zero you know but mm -hmm. it's or even remote id is sort of a that's an interesting one because that affects a lot of people that aren't just fpv pilots it's still drone shit though i mean you, you get some like more um faa or not FAA, uh, ama type pilots yeah. and shit or something yeah but even still you there's a there's a different audience it's crazy because there's a different audience for cinematic dgi drone guys and fpv freestylers huge different audience i mean a lot of cinematographers watch uh yeah you know that that other type of content <clears throat> somebody left a comment when i when i did my um i think of my influencer video somebody is like there's such a different uh, different camps of fpv now basically you have your you know fpv freestyle race fpv drone people and then your cinematic who maybe have never flown a fucking five inch. They've only flown in Nevada or a Cinewoop or something like that. They've never even flown freestyle. Like drones are, is really branching into like way different. Yeah. I don't want to say clicks, but just different industries. Maybe, you know what I mean? There's a hobbyist and then there's the cinematography. Yeah. That, however you want to fucking label it. There, there's these two very, very, now there's these very distinct separate industries uh, of hobbyist and, and, cinematographers making shit with drones i've also noticed speaking of that <clears throat> I, I i don't know how it is for like regular gig workers i'm also interested maybe leave a comment down below if you're a regular gig worker is it drying up for you I, i've seen in the media there's a lot less fpv shots it seemed like a year or two ago every new movie you saw every fucking commercial you saw every car commercial had that swooping fpv shot i've been seeing a lot less of that i wonder if like I wonder if the industry as a whole is just kind of burnt out on on drone shots and FPV shots and shit. Yeah, I wonder as well. And I'm have you noticed that at all in media? Um, no, I, I don't know if I even noticed it ever. To be honest, like noticed it one way or another. I never really paid attention because I, I don't really look out, you know, for the drone shots. But... I don't really consume a lot of traditional media. Like I don't watch a yeah, lot of true. movies or TV shows anymore. Um, I should watch more movies, but I don't. But uh, I and I'm not trying to talk about like YouTube. You know, like we get in those tangents sometimes. I'm yeah. more or less trying to get down to uh, this idea of what is what is the uh, like what are the the like parallels in FPV that you know? Because there's 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 like a many parallels in FPV. Uh, you have a lot of, you know, you have a lot of guys who fly FPV drones, but are also like cinematographers or camera camera operators. Mm -hmm. Then you also have a lot of FPV guys who are like, don't know shit about that stuff, but they used to like skateboard and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a lot of that. And then you have, uh, then you have the, another set of people who were just into fucking like robotics and stuff or into mm -hmm. build, you know, raspberry Pi. makers, makers. Yeah. So, you know, so you have this like weird intersection of all these things that sort of parallel and it's like, how do you, cause all those, those are all opportunities for just like getting people in those other interests into FPV through your content. It's FPV is definitely unique in that way yeah. as it attracts all kinds. Yeah. Like you said, you have your makers, you have just your straight RC folks, mm -hmm. you have just your fucking, uh, just drone people that only do drones have never done anything else RC gamers fucking everybody man fpv is pretty fucking cool you know what i mean if you see like oh shit drones flying in the air like mm, that's pretty cool especially the little vr goggles you're gonna want to you're gonna be interested in that <clears throat> it's definitely a super unique thing yeah i was talking to a guy the other night and i was went on a bike ride and this guy that was on the ride uh he had a he had his iphone on a, like a small rig setup and i was like uh 
what's that all about? And we're talking about, so he's like, I was like, you do video stuff? He's like, yeah, I use my iPhone and you know, I have a mini four and he was showing me this like footage of like, he's like, look at this shot of like the mini four doing something around a building. I was like, yeah, that's cool. Uh, I appreciate that. That's cool. Uh, but, uh, have you ever put, have you ever put FEV goggles on? He's like, I've never done FEV. And I was, cause he knew what it was. He's just like, I've mm-hmm. never tried it. I was like, well, I'll tell you what, if you ever put those goggles on, you want to throw that, you'll want to throw that mini three in the trash <laughs> immediately. For real, for uh, real. A lot of converts. Uh, cause I think like I still use my old ass DJI drone for some shots sometimes just for utility aspects. Like I don't take it out to play with it and like, right. how, but some people who buy DJI drones will take them out to play with them. You know, mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm playing with my toy drone. It's like, yeah. That's fu- it's fun if you don't know anything. You just want to fly a drone around. It's, yeah. You know? And so I was like, I was like, hit me up. So I might have a. You know, for those people, something like remote ID is probably a huge fucking hassle. So, like, once a month, I go to the park and just fly it around. Don't even get shots. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like, oh, neat. Well, probably just fill the park, right? But like, and having to do all this other bullshit, trust certificate, register it, fucking remote ID, like, uh, that probably makes it not worth it for a ton of people. Uh, oh, like people who do like camera drones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just your average, like the person you're talking about, just your random person that doesn't even like film buildings. Like they just go to the park and fly a drone around because it's cool to fly a drone. Oh yeah. Know? Yeah. There was a like, guy. That seems like a huge hassle for just that. One time we were at a, I was at a multi GP race in, in Ohio and this dude shows up he's like, oh, I was going to fly my, and, it, and literally this place where they, they do the race is an open field. It's maybe less it's probably less than an acre but and they only use a fraction of it for a multi-gp course but it's a but it's in a metro park and it some for some reason they the metro park designated this this plot of land as the drone field where you can go fly your drone yeah, and this yeah. guy shows That's up with his camera air. drone and there's nothing to look at right well, he's flying around during the race just blasting everybody's video well he out. came and he's like can i fly my drone and of course no one's going to be like nope this is our spot because you know it's public public property yeah. He's like, yeah, it's, he's like, yeah, it's fine. But then he goes and flies his Mavic up and Dave's like doing a, he's doing a lap. He's like, up oh, there's that Mavic in my feed or whatever. Like he could, is blasting him. So, yeah. Well, I guess he should go to Rampage and that's for drones. Pay a hundred bucks, fly around. Well, put a remote ID on it. <clears throat> speaking of which, last year there was a guy who showed up with a Mavic at Rampage and he wanted to fly it. And they're like, well, we can't fail safe check a Mavic because mm-hmm. there's no fail fail safe mm-hmm. on it so therefore we can't allow you to fly well there is if it loses control it's going to go back to home yeah but he they the rampage once rotor riot wanted a fail safe to fail safe like disable completely like fpv drone yeah they basically just don't want people fly bla- bla- probably blasting people out with their fucking mavic yeah they should just said that yeah that sounds like an excuse <laughs> yeah well, that's we're coming up about an hour for the podcast. We covered remote ID a little bit. We the TLDR and the Rotor Riot thing. I'd just be like, yeah, you know, again, have fun if you want to go have fun and pay money if you can afford it. But if you if you're stretching your budget to go to that, there's definitely a ton of other events. As far as remote ID, don't fucking install that shit if you're flying FPV. It's stupid. You're and if anybody stupid. wants to see Dead Cell, uh, right? I don't want to say I don't want to say you're stupid. It's <laughs> stupid to do that. Not you. The act of that is stupid as fuck. To what? Common sense, man. To put remote ID on an FPV drone. Oh yeah. That's never going to fly as high as an airplane. Get the fuck out of here. Um, like I said in my, I made a, my remote ID video. Like I said, I said, if there's any, if you feel like you are somebody who has to follow the rules for whatever reason, like you just feel like you can't break the rules and not adhere to remote ID, just fly all your drones in Mexico. Yeah, uh, get a remote ID, then go get your ham license too, because you're also violating those fucking yeah. regulations. There's a lot of shit. You know, if you fly your drones in Mexico, you don't have to have remote ID. So, um, there's that, but don't do that. Don't send these people to poor Mexico, no, but leave not them be. literally Mexico, like fly your, <laughs> oh, just, li- Mexico. just lie, just lie in your video. Go you're to, ruining go it. To you ruined it. <laughs> fly in a very American. No, don't location. lie. I'm not telling you to lie. I'm not telling the you any geo guesser with 30 seconds could guess. Yeah. And, yeah, exactly. So, um, if you want to see dead cell at Rotor Riot rampage, send us, uh, 
sixteen hundred dollars. I will. I would never go to that. I would. Are you kidding me? Can all you your see friends me walking are there. around there. I know. Be hilarious. I don't have any f- <laughs> Cricket will be there. I'll see all. I'll see all my friends. I'm going to see Cricket soon. Last year. Talking. Last year, Cricket said I talked to Cricket, and he's like, he should come. So I'm uh, yeah, of course he did. I want him to come to my events too. Like we're homies who like hanging out, but I'm not gonna fucking go to Rampage. <laughs> well, we should have a we should have a our own. A, we should do an event instead. A dead cell. Yeah, Done. we should do an event. Done. I, I like so I do my events. If nobody's been to one, I just pick a random city. I hit up locals. Like, do you have a spot we can have twenty people at? We find a spot. We all show up and fly. Like it's gone well every time. It's basically a DIY like gorilla style meetup. And all the spots we've been to are like bandos or parking lots where people usually fly in the weekends anyway. So it's always fine. I'm trying to think where. Um, we... And we always have a backup spot too, just in case. But I'm trying to think of where. Let's we... do a dead cell. A dead cell fucking meetup. Yeah, we should. Um, I'm down. That'll be Bogota, the first Bach Grinder meetup of the year. Where it was Bogota. <laughs> Bogota, Colombia. I'm kidding. Oh, that sounds expensive. I'm kidding. As shit. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't. I don't have a passport either. Uh, yeah. I was and so- I can't fly in a plane longer than three hours or I have panic attack. So it's got to be within a three-hour flight uh, in the states. We could do. That's a should, lot of places. Honestly, dude, we should go back to Florida. <clears throat> I don't know. All Let's right. try Ohio first, <laughs> bro. Fuck it's like lot. so central to everybody, but there's nothing here to fly. It's there's like yeah, that's true. There's a couple places, but it's not. I will if we're gonna do a meetup. I want it to be all right. Here's the thing. How about this? Here's an idea. If any of you out there are within a three hour flight of Philadelphia, not not here. We can't do it. No, here. With, we already did here. Within a three hour flight of Philadelphia, mm-hmm. because you oh, 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 oh. drop a spot. Drop a spot. Okay, and if it's if it's good, you know, like, you know, send us a, send us an email or a voicemail or something with a Google Maps. What's our email? Uh, <laughs> there'll be a link somewhere in the description with our email. Okay. Look in the description. There's links in the description. Look in there. I'm pretty sure it's on our YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure I put one on there. If right. not, you can email me, which is on my YouTube channel, which is a uh, Grim Ripper 420. <laughs> <laughs> look in the description look in the description all right i don't think i have anything else i don't either i think that's say. good yeah so let us know and we'll we'll try to make that happen 